Robert Kiyosaki is back with us. He's the author of Why the Rich Are Getting Richer. Robert, this is a question that has rocked political campaigns for decades. What is the answer? Well, debt and taxes for a young man like you will be your largest single expense. You see, but for a rich person with financial education, debt and taxes will be my largest source of income. It's so opposite of what everybody teaches you. So that's why I wrote Why the Rich Are Getting Richer, because it's really not fair. You'll work very, very hard, and debt and taxes will eat you alive. Where a guy like me, because I had a rich dad, and like President Trump, debt and taxes make us richer. It's, it's opposite. So how do I get to your end of the spectrum? Is it largely through investing in real estate? Well, first of all, it's an education. There's many ways you can do it. I primarily do it via what I call the McDonald's formula. If you, you know, there's, there's a movie, Founder with uh, was it Michael Keaton. He said, McDonald's business is real estate. So it's not hamburgers, it's real estate. And so my business, the Rich Dad Company, is real estate. And that's why I use debt and I use taxes to acquire large some, large tracts of real estate and pay no taxes. Hmm. Legally, legally. Huh. It's, it's a very interesting discussion as the government looks to put forth tax reform. I mean, what are people getting wrong when it comes to taxes? Just not knowing the loopholes out there? Correct. If you're a hardworking employee or a doctor or an attorney, you will pay the highest taxes. Hmm. But for the professional investor, like I'm an entrepreneur and I create investments, I pay no taxes. So as long as, that's why in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, lesson number one was the rich don't work for money. Because the moment you work for money, you're taxed. And so this, this tax reform is a good idea. But for a young guy like you, it's best to learn early why guys like me use debt and taxes to get rich whereas debt and taxes will eat you alive. Now, you know, many people think, oh, I'll just start my own business and that's how I'll move up the economic scale. But in the book you say that may not be the best idea. Explain. Well, again, it goes back to what is your level of financial education. We're taught to be employees, not entrepreneurs. Go to school, get a job, not go to school and create jobs. And the mindset between a person who creates jobs and a person who looks for a job are opposite. It's like you know, two sides of a coin. Mm. So that's why you know, both the president, and I know he's not the most popular guy of a lot of younger guys, mm. but he's a good man. You wrote a book with him. Yeah, two books now. He's a good man, but we, we're concerned about financial education. Mm. So he and I are entrepreneurs. We uh, thousands of employees, lots of real estate, and because we do that, the IRS gives us tax breaks because we use debt because the government wants us to borrow money, which is why interest rates are so low. And because we borrow, create jobs and buy real estate, we pay no taxes. Mm. Legally. <laughs> Legally. Well, you mentioned low interest rates. And with that, you also say saving is for losers. Explain that tagline because I think it runs contrary to what a lot of people have Correct. been taught. Thank you for saying that. For years, I've caught hell, as you know, because I kept saying savers are losers. And you saw interest rates. When I was your age, interest rates were 15%. Now in Japan and Switzerland, they're sub-zero. Why would you save money? It makes no sense to me. Some people say, well, save money, but the, but the whole economic system, which we're a part of right now, wants debtors. They don't want savers. So we have too much money in the system. So because they have too much cash in the system, they punish the saver and reward the debtor hmm. with low interest rates and no taxes. So what's the, the other solution then to that? I mean, should I put the money into the stock market? Should I take on debt and invest that money in the stock market? Well, as you know, uh, you guys are so lucky being your age. So we're in the information age. The problem is our school system still in the stone age. Hmm. And they don't provide you the knowledge to process information. So like when you say go to school to get a job, it doesn't make sense to me because I'll be taxed. And so really we're in the knowledge age and information. So the most important investment is your financial education, which is not taught in school. 
And so that's why so many bright young people like you come out, their student loan debt up to here, they're looking for this mystical, high paying job, and they're living with mom and dad. <laughs> so your number one tip for young people would be? Well, I would seek financial education for what I call real teachers, because when I was in school, most of them were fake. You know what I mean? They really didn't know what they were talking about. Like my accounting teacher, I'm in my MBA program. I knew more about accounting than he did because <laughs> the poor guy never left school. You know, he was like my poor dad, a school teacher. Real world experience. Yeah, <laughs> really, yeah, surprising. I went to flight school. I, I flew for the Marine Corps. I had to have real teachers. You know, you don't want some guy who's never flown before or, to, or just flew a little Piper Cub to teach me to fly in combat. I needed real teachers. So as young people, I always say to them, choose your teachers wisely. Make sure they're real. Make sure they know what they're talking about. They're not people just working for that paycheck. You know, like, like most financial planners are good guys, but they're not rich people. Why would you take advice from them? And Robert, before we let you go, what is your advice for women and investing? Oh. What, what kind of mistakes do women make when it comes to investing? The biggest, you should talk to my wife, Kim. You know, I mean, she's beautiful on the outside, beautiful on the inside. But she says this to all women. Women, you and I know that when it comes to money, women are smarter than men. That's from my wife. <laughs> all right, Robert Kiyosaki, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.